What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Stats with Evan, and I'm here to preview this weekend's three-game series between my Washington Nationals and the Chicago Cubs. Let's get it poppin'. So coming into this week, the Nationals are 70 and 57, the Cubs are 69 and 58. Washington is second in the NL East, Chicago is first in the NL Central. The Nats currently have the first wild card in the National League. The Cubbies are the three seed, so if the season ended today, the Nats would play the second wild card, which would be St. Louis. The Cubs would play the two seed in the National League, which would be Atlanta. The Nationals are currently 13 and 13 against the NL Central. The Cubs are 14 and 14 against the NL East. In their last series this last week, the Nationals won three out of four in Pittsburgh. The Cubs swept a three game series against the Giants. So here's what you need to know about the two teams going into this weekend. This is the last of two head-to-head -head series between the Nationals and the Cubs. Chicago leads the season series two games to one, and the Cubs are outscoring the Nationals in the series by a count of 22 to 16. The Nationals, this is the last of four straight series for them against the NL Central. They've won each of the previous three against the Reds, Brewers, and now Pittsburgh, and they're a combined eight and two in this span. And they're going up against the Cubs team that beat them two out of three at Nationals Park from May 17th to the 19th. And the thing about that series is that ever since May 19th, the Nationals have not lost a series against the NL Central. They've won four in a row. The Cubs have not won a series against the NL East. And another interesting thing about this series is that this could be a playoff preview as, as of the time of this video, the Cubs are only half a game from falling into the second wild card spot. It would be second because at the moment the Nationals do have a better record than the Cubs at the time of this video. And now let's talk starters. On Friday, the Nationals are sending out Anibal Sanchez. Sanchez is 7-6 with a 3.99 ERA. In his last start, he went four innings, gave up eight hits, five runs, walked four, struck out five, and he got a no decision as the Nationals lost to the Brewers 15-14 in 14 innings. The Cubs are countering with John Lester. Lester is 10-8 with a 4.23 ERA. In his last start, he went six innings, gave up four hits, no runs, walked five, struck out three, and he took the dub as the Cubs won 2-0 in Pittsburgh. On Saturday, the Nationals are sending out Joe Ross. Ross is 3-3 with a 5.48 ERA. In his last start, it didn't go long. He went three and a third innings, gave up three hits, no runs, walked nobody, struck out two, and he got the no decision before leaving after a ball hit him in the foot, after in the leg, at, rather. But the Nationals did win that game 13-0 in Pittsburgh. The Cubs are countering with Jose Quintana. Quintana is 11-7 with a 3.91 ERA. In his last start, he went seven innings, gave up five hits, no runs, walked nobody, struck out seven, and he took the dub as the Cubs beat the Pirates 7-1 in the Little League Classic in Williamsport. In the series finale on Sunday, the Nationals are sending out Steven Strasburg. Strasburg is 15-5 with a 3.65 ERA. In his last start, he went seven innings, gave up four hits, no runs, walked one, struck out six, and got a no decision as the Nationals lost 4-1 in Pittsburgh. The Cubs are countering with Cole Hamels. Hamels is 7-4 with a 3.73 ERA. In his last start, he went six innings, gave up five hits, three runs, walked two, struck out five, and he took the dub as the Cubs beat the Giants 5-3. So here's how the Nationals can win this series. The Washington Nationals are finishing up a tour of the NL Central in which they're currently 8-2. Now they face their toughest test of the four series as they face the Chicago Cubs at Wrigley Field. Washington's offense has been blazing hot recently, scoring double digits in five of the last eight games, totaling 81 runs in this span. That is unheard of. This has created relief for the bullpen, who has only had to pitch 19 innings of meaningful baseball. That means, like, when they came in with the game on the line. They only did that in four of the last eight games. And just in time, too, as the Nationals recently sent their closer, Sean Doolittle, to the IL with a dead arm. In the meantime, Washington has three active arms not named Sean Doolittle that have recorded a save for the club this season. Those would be Wander Suero, Fernando Rodney, and Daniel Hudson. Washington can win this series by hanging around early and hitting Chicago's bullpen hard late. So that was how the Nationals can win this series, but now let's look at how the Cubs can win it. The Chicago Cubs come into the weekend holding on to a slim half-game lead in the NL Central, and now they're going to have to scrap in practically every inning for the rest of the month as they face foes like the Nationals, New York, I'm talking Mets here, the Cubs do not play the Yankees this season, and the Brewers, 
just to hold on to that spot. And all three of those clubs have their eyes on the postseason. Chicago is powered by an offense that loves the long ball. They've hit an even 200 for the season, which is second in the NL Central, just three behind Milwaukee, and it's tied with Boston for ninth in all of baseball. Additionally, the Cubs boast a staff ERA of 409 for the season, which is seventh in baseball. Chicago can win this series by using the long ball and plenty of it to knock Washington back to the Navy Yard. So here's my thoughts on the series. Stop me if you've heard this before, but the Nationals once again find themselves in one of the MLB's marquee matchups this weekend. I mean, yeah, there's also Yankees-Dodgers, but Nats-Cubs is also going to be pretty good. These two teams have a lot in common. They both feature offenses that love the long ball and starting pitching staffs that are good at keeping the ball in the yard. Two of the three games feature pairs of starting pitchers with similar ERAs. Their ERAs are within one of each other on Friday, and on Sunday, the two ERAs of Strasburg and Hamels are within .10 of each other. Like, they're separated by .08. The only game that doesn't fit this mold is Saturday, but Joe Ross, the Nationals pitcher for Saturday, is 3-0 over the last four games and has only allowed one run total over the span. When I look at how they've done against each other's divisions, this is what I see. The Nationals have won four straight series against the NL Central dating back to June, and the Cubs haven't won a series against the NL East since they left Washington. For this reason, I'll say the Nats take two out of three. So what y'all think? Who's taking this series? Is it the Nationals or the Cubs? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, I'm Stats with Evan, and I hope you have a 100% day. See y'all later.